Hi everyone, so it's Christy from Green Eye Tarot, and today I'm here to film a video about um, the Celtic Goddess Oracle, um, which is an oracle deck that I use quite a bit in my spiritual practice, um, and is really one of my favorite oracle decks of all time. Um, I use it in really specific ways, like I said, as it relates to my spiritual practice, but I kind of wanted to talk about this deck um, that I'm referring to, the Celtic Goddess Oracle, which is by Judith Shaw. So recently, another um, a mass market Celtic Goddess Oracle deck came out um, by Jillian Kemp. Um, and I um, was super excited when I heard about this deck. Like I heard about it a while ago and I was like, kind of like really excited about it and sort of watching and like did some research about it. And I, um, I was kind of excited about the artwork cause it looked really beautiful. But um, I, some of the um, like keywords and things that were associated with the goddesses, they missed the mark a little bit from what I could see. But I thought, okay, let me just give it a chance. Um, and then it did get released, I, it was recently. Um, and um, I did like a little bit more research about it and I'm really glad that I did because, um, you know, there was a lot of feedback regarding the research for the deck and how there was a lot of inaccurate information. So just about maybe the origins of the goddesses um, and about like their associations and maybe like the myths that um, are usually associated with those goddesses. So um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm really glad that I sort of didn't get the deck because I have a feeling I, it wouldn't have worked out and I would have been disappointed. So I'm here to kind of talk about why if you're interested in Celtic goddesses specifically or just and, and working with them or learning about them more um why this deck is definitely the better choice and i've had this deck for a long time i absolutely adore it um it is the celtic goddess oracle i'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of go through the cards and just talk a little bit about the guidebook um that comes with it because the guidebook is amazing in terms of its research and its information and um the stories and myths that go along with each goddess um their origins you know what where specifically because when we say celtic it covers a lot of different um geographical regions you know we're talking about britain and ireland and wales and scotland but we're also talking about a lot of sort of primordial goddesses which were also of um gaulish origin and also roman gaulish French Gaulish. So there's so many different um, like variations of where these Celtic goddesses originated. And um, this deck is just impeccably researched and it, um, it contains really, really wonderful information. And if you're looking for a Celtic goddess oracle, this is the one that you need to get. Um, if you're looking to connect with those deities, which is something that I do in my spiritual practice, even if it's not part of a spiritual practice and you just want to work with this energy or learn more about these deities, this deck is superb. And it's definitely the one that you should get if you haven't already got the Celtic Goddess Oracle, the mass market one that just came out. Even if you do have it, I feel like this one is definitely worth looking at and um, I feel like will probably serve you better in my opinion. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around, like I said, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you this deck. Okay, so this is the Celtic Goddess Oracle by Judith Shaw. Um, and this is um, a deck that you can actually get on um, her Etsy shop, um, which I will definitely link in the description box below. So you can check that out. Um, it's obviously an, an independently produced deck. Um, and um, and like I was saying, it's absolutely fabulous. It's, it's amazing. I use this um, every day almost it's a huge part of my of my spiritual practice because I do work with Celtic deities, Celtic goddesses in particular. Um, so, you know, when I found this deck, it just really spoke to me and it's just been a really beautiful part of my spiritual practice. Um, so the cards are rather large. They're like very long. Um, so they're not like a standard oracle or a standard tarot size just for for uh, comparison, here's the Tower of the Hidden Realm. Um, so you can see it's quite a bit longer um, and a little bit wider. So yeah, they're definitely like a unique shape. 
um, but I tend to use these as altar cards a lot. I do that a lot. These are, um, you know, deities that I work with during, you know, specific seasons and times of years and um, specific celebrations. So, um, yeah, so I do use them quite a bit like on my altar. Um, but they're just, they are beautiful. Um, her artwork is just, it's just so, it's just so beautiful and, um, and spiritual. Like I just, I love the way she uses these symbols. Like here's the spiral, you know, which is such a, um, an important symbol in Celtic culture, um, and Celtic mythology. So just, I just love her artwork and the way she has, has depicted, um, this, the goddesses and, you know, if you read about Judith Shaw, which you can definitely do on her website, you know, she spent a lot of time creating this deck because these are all her art. These are art pieces. They all started out as, you know, paintings and then she turned them into a deck. So she spent a lot of time meditating on these goddesses and working with them and learning about them. And like I said, her, this deck is impeccably researched and provides such wonderful information about each goddess. Um, and, uh, the guidebook that comes with it, which I'll show you in, in a moment, um, is like I said, is excellent. She does provide, um, you know, information about like the Celtic other world and the Celtic underworld and really just kind of a little bit of background information about, um, the places, you know, in the Celtic world where these myths, you know, took place. Um, and also just, you know, a little, like I said, a little bit of a background information about the Tuwa Jedan, which is the, um, sort of the ancient Celtic people um, who were said to have been, you know, driven out of the, out of Ireland, out of, you know, the Celtic world, and they went basically underground. Um, and now, you know, we sort of know, that, know them as the she or the fae. So they're sort of like the fairy people. So not fairies with little wings, but, um, you know, these mythological beings who actually still exist, they just exist in a different world now because they were driven out of our earthly world. So she talks a lot about the Celtic triple, you know, the triadic goddesses, the triple goddesses, and what that means um, and who they are, you know, as they pertain to the um, the Celtic world and Celtic mythology. Um, but she includes a lot of really like well-known Celtic goddesses, many of which you may know and you many work with already, but she also you know, features some obscure goddesses, goddesses that you may have not have heard, you know, you may have don't know their stories, you know, you don't know, um, you know, about them at all. So I find that that's sort of what drew me to this deck to begin with is just the, the depth of Celtic goddesses that we're exploring. So this is Anya and she is a Celtic summer goddess. And she's just so beautiful. I love the like her fallen her headband of fallen stars. Like I said, the um, the spirals that, um, are in it and, you know, just what everything that she includes in the artwork, you know, really speaks to each goddess. Um, and the guidebook, you know, gives a, a lovely little, um, like introduction to the goddess and like what she is associated with and then a divinatory meaning and then her story, which is wonderful. The stories are the most um, information for each card is the story. And it includes the, like I said, the myth that goes along with each goddess. And you get so much out of reading these stories. Um, it's just a different way to work with this deck and to get to know it in the beginning. Um, and it provides you so much more information to work with them in specific ways. So this is Anya. And sorry, the cards are sticking a little bit. Uh, and this is Arduina, and she is a Gaulish goddess of forests. And um, I just love the inclusion of, you know, goddesses from Gaul, because Gaul is a place that, that doesn't exist anymore in terms of its name. Um, it's now pretty much um, what we know as France in terms of ge geographical location. Um, you know, the, the areas of France close to the Switzerland and Germany and, and that, like, those borders there. Um, and um, so Arduina is actually a goddess that I do work with quite a bit because my ancestry um, can be traced back to Gaul and, um, and, that, and that sort of ancient civilization. So I'm really drawn to goddesses that are considered Gaulish goddesses. Um, and so Arduina is a, is a goddess of the forest. 
And then of course um, we have Ariane Rod and she's uh, a Welsh goddess, um, a star goddess. She's known for reincarnation. She's known as the lady of the silver wheel. So you can see here, um, you know, depicted uh, and it's just beautiful. Like I said, her, the Triketra, like her artwork is just, it's just beautiful. I, I absolutely adore it. I absolutely adore this deck. Um, I'm going to continue to say that I'm sure. And then we have Artio, um, which is another goddess that I work with frequently. Um, she's a bear goddess. Um, and, uh, she's, uh, basically she is a Celtic goddess. She's also, uh, sort of comes from a Roman, a Roman goddess. So, so many of these goddesses, you know, sort of like crossed geographical areas and crossed civilizations. Um, but yeah, so she is a, um, a goddess of, like I said, a bear goddess. She is known for abundance and, um, just, you know, confidence in yourself and, um, and you can see her, she has like a, a basket full of fruits and vegetables for abundance. I just love like the bears. Um, and I love that she's wearing sort of like a bear skin. Again, just a beautiful depiction of these goddesses. Uh, and just such, there's so much depth in them. And this is um, Badgaha. So this is, um, she's a, of course, a war goddess. Um, she is a Celtic war goddess. And she is part of... Um, the triple goddess so she's sort of one of the aspects of the morrigan and again she's she is known as a as a war goddess and then we have um bloodoweth and bloodoweth is also sort of a welsh goddess she's one of the main figures of the featured in the um the mabinogian the welsh cycle of those early celtic stories of gods and goddesses um, and I just love this with the owl and all the flowers because she's known as a flower goddess. Um, and so she's known for beauty and like claiming your power and hope and innocence. And I just love, like I said, I love the flowers. I just, like I said, the depictions of the goddesses in this are just amazing. And then you have Boan, who's a goddess of inspiration and creativity, as well as poetry. Um, she is one of the uh, the, the Tuwa Dejan, um, the people of Danu, and we'll get to Danu in a moment. Uh, but you know, one of the prehistoric, um, people of the Celtic world. And then we have Bronwyn. Bronwyn is a Welsh, is a Welsh, pretty well-known Welsh goddess. She's a goddess of love and beauty. Um, she's supposed daughter of, uh, King Bran the Blessed. And then, of course, we have Bridget. That's my matron goddess. I work with Bridget very closely. Um, she's a goddess, as we know, a goddess of healing and poetry, but she's also a goddess of the hearth. Um, and I have many altars and many dedications to Bridget um, all over my home. I work with her very closely. And now we have um, a goddess called Car Ivermeth. Um, and she's a goddess of dreams and prophecy. And she's a, actually a pan-Celtic goddess. And that's what's great about this deck is that Judith Shaw gives you that information of where this goddess was worshipped. So she's a pan-Celtic goddess, meaning she was worshipped in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Um, and so her name like may have changed a bit depending on where she was worshipped. But she is also known as a daughter of one of the Tua Jedan and um and again just worshipped in many different parts of the Celtic world. So not just a Irish goddess, but a pan-Celtic goddess. And then we have, of course, the Kaliak. And this is another um goddess that I work with um pretty closely. Um she's the considered the queen of winter. She's um typically associated with the crone. Um, I am, I love the winter. I was born in the winter. I have a winter soul. That's what I usually say about myself. I, most people do not like the winter. Um, most people think I'm crazy for loving the snow and the winter and just the harshness of it. But, um, I am a crone at heart and, uh, I, like I said, I have a winter soul. And so the Kaliak speaks to me, um, on a very personal level. Um, and she is, you know, considered a goddess of transformation. Um, and just, being one with the dark, which I love, or embracing that quiet, that solitude of winter, which I absolutely love. 
And then we have Canola, which is, um, you know, probably not a very well-known goddess, but she's a goddess of inspiration and creativity, um, sort of like dream work and things like that. But the guidebook provides, you know, a story for each of these goddesses, which is absolutely amazing, like I said. And this is, of course, Keridwen. This is another goddess that I work very closely with. She's a dark goddess of transformation. Her symbol, of course, is this cauldron. I have a cauldron, um, a cauldron uh, pendant that was made um, by a beautiful and wonderful artist on Etsy, um, Stephanie Woodfield, and um, it is Keridwen's cauldron and it is on my altar at all times it's there all the time um just as a sign of spiritual growth and abundance and that transformation and that ability to reborn and sort of i see it as constantly reinvent yourself um so that's caridwin and then we have another goddess that's probably not you know well known um Kleena is how you pronounce this which you know a lot of i like that there's pronunciation as well presented because if you try to just sound this out, it's definitely not going to come out as Kleena unless you are fluent in Welsh um, or, you know, Gaelic languages. Um, it definitely would not come out as Kleena, but it's very nice that, you know, the um, the pronunciations are provided so you can kind of really sort of honor, honor these goddesses um, and use their, you know, appropriate names. So she's a goddess of beauty and the sea and also of um, the afterlife. I just... Like if you just look at how beautiful she is. It's just gorgeous. And this is Cora. She's a serpent goddess of Ireland and Scotland. Um, and so serpents, of course, are sort of the, that symbol of um, life and death and rebirth again. Um, sort of that infinity, that eternity. You know, you see they're like loop. It's looped. It's like entwined with each other um again you see the um the spirals you know included in this um so really she really did sort of channel the energy of in each for of each goddess for these you know little pieces of art and they're just they're amazing and then here we have Kreia, um who's a goddess of love um and she's also sort of a goddess known for um like communication with the spirit world um and seeking like clear visions and things like that and then we have again another um probably lesser known goddess um and this is a uh, Krithalad and she's also a Welsh goddess um she's a, also a flower goddess and a goddess of love but she is a Welsh goddess and this is um, Dehut, and um, she's a Breton goddess of um, love and sexuality. Um, and uh, Judith Shaw, the creator, also kind of talks about how she's, her name has been obscured. Like, it's like been lost in time, lost within time. So I love that her name, you know, like reclaiming her name and like, you know, and, and remembering her name, I think is such a beautiful thing and sort of honoring her because she does talk about how so many of these goddesses were sort of lost to time and lost to like the the patriarchal society that sort of took over and sort of just usurped that you know that goddess centric you know the, that mother centric um religions that were practiced at the time and so um so i just love that you know they're sort of being returned to their place of honor and that's kind of what i see in this deck that you know their their names are being returned to them which i just think is such a beautiful thing and this is, of course, Danu, who is sort of the Celtic mother goddess. Um, so she's sort of like an earth goddess. She's, you know, like a, representing fertility and abundance and just that grounded earthy energy. Um, so, you know, she's sometimes sort of just known as like mother earth, you know, as Gaia. We can kind of think of her as Gaia. Um, she's sort of that relative of Gaia or you know if we are looking at like the Greek pantheon as of Gaia Danu is sort of the equivalent to that um in the Celtic world and then of course we have Ellen of the Ways another favorite Celtic goddess of mine just I love this depiction with the lantern um you know she's just a goddess of journeying and pathways and um and sort of that path through the forest you know um sort of that that feeling of going through um and coming out the other side so Ellen of the Ways I always think of the Forest of Enchantment Tarot I always like think of Ellen of the Ways um and I always like that white stag that's 
the fool card and the world card when he's leaving i always think of ellen of the ways like that embodies her spirit um and i just love that um she is considered a welsh goddess she is a celtic goddess but she is considered of the um more of the welsh pantheon because she appears in the mabinogian stories and then we have epona who um again is a uh a Celtic horse goddess, but she is a Gaulish goddess. Um, she's actually a French Gaulish goddess. Um, and she, she was worshiped in Britain and she was, um, worshiped in French Gaul and, and her worship sort of spread to Rome. Um, so she sort of kind of crossed geographical and, and civilizations. Um, and so she's known by many names, but, um, Epona is what we know her as in terms of the Celtic iteration of her. And then um, we have another goddess um, who may be a little familiar to everyone, um, Aideen. Um, and she's another sort of goddess of rebirth and transformation. Um, and uh, Judith Shaw talks about how she's known as the shining one. So um, she actually is also known as White Lady of the Fae. Um, in, in her story and in her myth, it's said that wherever she walks, like um, these flowers, these beautiful flowers sprout, um, these blossoms sprout wherever she walks. Um, so that's Aideen. And then we have, um, another probably lesser known, um, Fan. Um, and she's a goddess of sea, of the sea. Um, so you can see she's depicted here, like in the of course with the beautiful ocean and you see the seagulls. Um, again, just beautiful. And then we have another, um, sort of like forest earthy goddess, um, Fleish. Um, and she is a Celtic goddess and, um, and she does talk about how a lot of these goddesses are complex. Like they have many layers and they've been known by, uh, you know, other names and just known in different to be worshiped, you know, in different aspects. Um, but she sort of like embodies that wildness, that instinct, um, you know, sort of the, uh, the abundance of the far like regeneration and sensuality and, um, and just your, your wild nature, but also combined with the domestic nature. So she's like, you see, she's sort of pictured with a cow um, and she's pictured with a deer. So sort of the wild of the forest, but the, the, do, the domesticity of a cow. Um, so it's sort of like that balance of, you know, kind of like embracing your wild nature, but also being grounded to the earth and, and having that sort of domestic, you know, feeling as well. And then this is Grania. So um, we actually saw her sister Anya as the first card. Um, she is a sun goddess. Um, and like I said, she is um, Anya's sister or sort of another aspect of Anya. Um, and she was, um, they were worshiped mostly in Ireland. Um, and she definitely is sort of associated with abundance. She is um, kind of associated as like a grain goddess or grain harvest. So I, um, I, uh, I focus on and, 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 um, and work with Grania around, um, Lunasa or Lamas that just passed. So that's usually the time of year that we see Grania kind of come forward. And, and I, that's when I usually work with her. And then we have, um, this is, uh, Maeve, um, and she's also known as Maeve. So you've probably seen her name as Maeve. Um, she's a sovereignty goddess, so she's known as Queen Maeve in a lot of the um, the myths, the Celtic myths and legends. Um, she's known as Queen Maeve, um, and, and again, she's a sovereignty goddess, so she is definitely known as a queen. Um, she's sort of represents fertility and strength and sexuality, and sort of accepting your own sovereignty. So we definitely know her as a queen. Uh, this is more. She's a goddess of the sun and sea. You can see this beautiful sun behind her and then the water. Again, I just love Judith's artwork. And then of course we have the Morrigan. Um, I'm sure very, you know, familiar. Um, we know her as a goddess of war and death. She is um, a triple goddess. So um, she's known in several aspects, but I do love this depiction of her with the crows or ravens, you know, and you sort of have this like wild wolf and the sword, you know, she's definitely, um, you know, a fierce goddess. Um, you know, sort of like that empowering female energy is what we get through the Morrigan, definitely. Um, she is sort of also a goddess of transformation and, and she's definitely considered a dark goddess. Um, and she's also known as the Phantom Queen. So here we have Neve, um, Neve of the golden hair. She's beautiful. Um, 
one of my favorite Celtic goddesses that I've, I've kind of learned more about. Um, and um, she's definitely sort of um, a goddess of happiness and freedom. And, um, and you can kind of see her on her, you know, she just looks so happy and she's on her horse and she's sort of inviting you, sort of a, a goddess that's inviting you to sort of embrace your freedom and, and just, um, you know, really sort of enjoy, you know, your inner journey. Um, and so that's need. And then we have another Welsh, Welsh, excuse me, flower and sun goddess. This is Olun. Um, so she's definitely a, um, a Welsh goddess. She's known as, um, the white lady of like the day or, um, the golden wheel of summer. So she's definitely a tribute to summer. Um, she's another, um, um, goddess that is sort of represents new beginnings and sort of, um, transformation in terms of like ripening, you know, so that, you know, again, that abundance, so many of the goddesses, you know, represent that abundance. Um, so she's definitely a goddess of flowers, uh, and definitely of the summer. And then we have Rhiannon, who's another, um, Celtic goddess. Um, she is a horse goddess. She sometimes is associated with Epona, who we saw before, who saw before. Again, sort of that crossing of um, different deities worshipped in different civilizations. Um, so Epona is a Gaulish horse goddess. Goddess Rhiannon, Rhiannon is more of a Welsh, sort of that Welsh um, Welsh civilization and deities. Um, and Judas Shaw talks about how. Um, that the, both of those goddesses um, may have been derived from another ancient goddess called Rigatona, whose name means great queen. Um, so, and she talks about how Rigatona is, her stories and meanings are lost. You know, again, that sort of being lost to time, but thankfully we have goddesses like Epona and Rhiannon who sort of have lived on and still embody that that horse goddess um, spirit. This is Rosemerta, and she's um, again a sort of a pan-Celtic goddess, um, worshipped in both Celtic and and by Roman Gauls. So she's a Gaulish goddess, but she's also a Celtic goddess. Um, and again, fertility, healing—you can see she has this cornucopia. Um, I always think of Rosemerta around Thanksgiving. I don't know if it's just because of the way her card and like she's got this butter churning. So I always think of like cooking and abundance, you know, around that, being thankful, being grateful. Um, and appreciating that abundance. So I always sort of um, call on Rosemerta around that time, that bountiful harvest. She always just reminds me of that time of year. Oops. And then we have Sulis, who of course is a, um, a sun goddess. She's also known as the bright one. Um, and she's another pan-Celtic sort of goddess that was worshiped in um, really, she's Welsh, she's Cornish, she's Breton. Um, she also has ties to um, Bridget in some ways as the bright one, but she is a goddess of healing and blessings. Um, she's definitely a sun goddess. Um, but again, she was worshiped, you know, through many different, in many different geographic locations. And then we have, um, Talcha, who is a Celtic earth goddess. She is, um, one that I work with, uh, around Lunasa. Again, Lamas that just passed August 1st. She's the foster mother of Lou. Um, and, um, he honored her by having games that were, um, that were done in her name, uh, for years and years and years. And they celebrated, um, Talcha at that time. So she's an earth goddess. She's a very important, um, a very important Celtic goddess and a very important part of my practice. So that's the Celtic goddess oracle by Judith Shaw. Again, I feel like if you're going to get a Celtic goddess oracle, let it be this one. Um, you know, if you really want to learn about, um, you know, read their stories, really like embody them, you know, learn them and, and work with them and, and invite them into your life and invite their, their energies into your life. This is definitely the deck that I would go to. Um, it's nothing against the Celtic goddess Oracle deck that came out by Jillian Kemp. I don't, you know, it's just, for me, it's such an, uh, an important part, and I feel like the research and the accuracy is very important to me. And because I'm honoring these goddesses and inviting them in and working with them, I, I just I, I want to make sure I'm 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 learning all I can about them and and sort of in the most accurate way. And I just feel like maybe that the Celtic goddess oracle, the mass market one that just came out, while beautiful and and, and looks very beautiful, is not 
um, is not exactly well researched and not as accurate as it, as it could be. So I definitely wanted to introduce this deck to many of you who are looking, you know, for a Celtic goddess deck, um, just as an option. I, I don't see a lot about this. Um, like I said, it's one of my favorite decks. Um, so this is the guidebook that comes with it. Um, it is, um, like I said, it is chock full of information. It's, like I said, it has a divinatory meaning. It has like an introduction to the goddess. It has pronunciation. And then it has the story. And you can see like this is Bronwen. Her story, you know, goes on and on. So it's, it's a very meaty guidebook in terms of introducing these goddesses and really, you know, just getting to know them and making sure we understand their stories and um, where they were, you know, where they were worshipped and how they were and what, what they're associated with. Um, and it's just... It's just wonderful. I can't say enough about this deck. Um, so please, if you're looking for a Celtic goddess, Celtic goddess oracle, definitely consider this one. Um, you won't be disappointed. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And now, um, just as a little exciting um, end to this video, I'm going to announce the winner of my giveaway, which um, I talked about in my video um, last weekend. Um, I did a deck declutter video and I celebrated having 200 subscribers. And so now I'm going to announce the winner of the giveaway. So um, for the giveaway, I entered all the names from the people who commented on the video from last weekend into Wheel of Names, which is a very fun free um, site that you can use. Um, where you literally just enter all the names and click and it spins for you. And so the winner of this giveaway, which um, again, as a reminder, you have a choice of the Ethereal Visions Tarot or the Steampunk Tarot. And you're going to get a lovely, um, fully illustrated tarot book. And the winner is Jennifer H. Hooray! So thank you so much to everybody who um, who participated, who commented, who watched the video. I appreciate you all so much. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and you have a beautiful week ahead and I will see you in the next video. Bye.